In this video, I'm going to show you how to go from this to this, the highest of high marshals, Helbrecht himself, chapter master of the Black Templars. Welcome to the Painting Coach. So I've primed the model in a dark grey. You can use black if you want. I've also left some of the other parts off and primed them white just to make things easier. The first thing we need to do is get started on basing the armour. And we're going to use Balthazar gold for this. So paint this all over those armour parts. We're also going to use the sword hilt and the iron halo as well. As we're going to be shading them both the same, I'm going to paint the silver metallics next as well. Now the colour I'm going to use for this is Iron Hand Steel. So make sure you paint this over all the silver areas, such as all the chains, the sword itself, as well as any other areas, such as on the back of the exhaust vents of the backpack. To shade all the metallics, I'm going to use some Null Oil. Now take your time with this, don't let it pool, especially when you're doing the sword and those lower areas of the armour. So putting on sparingly, just make sure you get good coverage. The first thing we want to do is highlight the hilt of the sword, as well as the Iron Halo, which is going to be a brighter brass colour, and they're going to start off with Sycorax Bronze for this. Next, we want to continue this almost silver shine. And in order to do this, we're going to use Canoptec Alloy. Now if you haven't got this, just mix a little bit of silver, bright silver paint, into that Sycorax bronze. To start highlighting the armour, first off we want to use Brass Scorpion. This is a fantastic colour. I'm going to use this to paint over the majority of the armour, leaving that null oil in the recesses and the darker Balthazar gold in the shadows. To start the highlighting, I'm going to take a 50-50 mix of Brass Scorpion and Rune Lord Brass, and we're looking to area highlight this. So we're not edge highlight per se, we're just looking where the light catches the model and popping this in. The final edge highlight is with pure Rune Lord Brass. Now take your time with this, use it fairly sparingly, but just catch all those raised edges. To highlight all the silver, really simple. Just go back to the old faithful chrome from Vallejo Model Air and catch all those raised areas. This is really easy to do on the chains and on the sword. Just drag the brush along the side of the model. Don't worry too much about the lantern, we'll come back and finish that later. But otherwise just carry on and get a nice, nice popping silver. With all the metallics done, let's have a look at doing some of the materials. So first off, we want to take a bad and black and paint this over all of the back of the cloak as well as the front of the tarbard on Helbrecht. You can also use it to fill in any ribbing that you can see between armour joints. There are lots of different materials on Helbrecht, from material to metallic. So what we want to do is paint the tarbard and the back of the cloak first. We want to use a soft highlight to do this. So the first highlight we're going to use is Corvus Black. And we're going to paint this over the majority of the material, leaving that abandoned black in the recesses. We want to start to sharpen up those highlights now. So we're going to use Eshin Grey, and we're going through a very gradual progression of greys here. What we want to do is make sure we catch those raised edges. So make sure you use the side of the brush. There's plenty of folds on the cloak, as well as the tar bar that you can just pull the brush along to get a nice sharp edge. Finally, we're going to really put a spot highlight in there using some Dawnstone, and we're looking to catch only the sharpest edges, and we're looking to very gently drag that brush along in just some little spots. We need to highlight the harder parts of black material next, such as the Templar crosses on the shoulder pads. So to do this, the first highlight colour we're going to use is Mechanicus Standard Grey, and we're looking to pull this along all those sharp edges. Finally, to show that this is a really hard material, we're looking to take some Administratum Grey and just use this to dot on those sharpest edges and where we've got some intersection. Moving on to the red parts of the cloak next, and we want to base everything with Corn Red. Whilst not everything is going to be a dark red, it's really easy if we just base everything right now, because Corn Red's a really nice shadow colour for the later red we're going to use. Next up, we want to shade some of those parts we painted red. Now, we want to get the parchment done first, so shade the parchment using some Null Oil. And you also want to make sure that you shade the Multi Melter with Null Oil as well, so you get a nice dark red. So first up, we want to highlight that parchment that we've just painted with Null Oil. So to do this, we're using Wazdaka Red, and to get a really nice highlight, desaturate that colour a little bit. What we want to do is drag it along the edges, and we also want to stipple it across a little bit, and stipple it across those sharp edges to give a really nice textured paper effect. Moving on to the brighter red next, and that's on the inside of the cloak and the inside of the tarbad, we just want to take some Mephiston Red and use this to paint over the entirety of the area, leaving that corn red in the absolute recesses. The next highlight on the red is with Evil Sun Scarlet. Now make sure you use this fairly sparingly, even paint it over that Mephiston Red. It should give you a really nice vivid red effect. Don't forget to also edge highlight the Multi Melter at this point, and you can also use it to paint those inserts around some of those Templar crosses so they really pop. 
The final highlight is going to be an orange colour and again because we've got different kinds of textures and materials we need to make them pop in different ways. So firstly we're going to use some Wild Rider Red on all the cloth and we're looking to just edge highlight with this like we've done all the way through. And lastly we're going to use some Troll Slayer Orange on those harder surfaces around the Templar crosses just on the corners to make it pop. Next up we want to paint the purity seals and the skulls and any other bone items on the model. So take some shafty bone, now painting this over the grey undercoat may take a couple of coats to cover, just keep it thin and build it up. And we're looking for all those paper purity seals as well as all the bone items such as the skull in the iron halo. Now to shade just the purity seals take some seraphim sepia and paint this all over. You don't want it to pool so don't put too much on, you just want it to warm up the colour a little bit and settle in those recesses. And for all the bone items, you want to take some Skeleton Horde Contrast Paint. And again, similar to the Seraphim Sepia, you don't want it to pool too much. You just want it to tint the colour and add a little bit of shade. Once that Seraphim Sepia and Skeleton Horde is dry, you can take some Screaming Skull and use this to highlight both the parchment and the bone items. For the parchment, we're looking to highlight the edges and any raised portions. And for the skull, we're generally looking to highlight those sharpest raised edges, such as the brow, the eye sockets and the teeth. I thought it would be a really nice touch to take the same colour on the candles as there is on the wax of the purity seals. So what I've done is I've based it all with Screamer Pink. I've also used this on the weapon grip. To shade the wax on the purity seals, the candles and the weapon grip, all I'm doing is just taking a little bit of null oil and working this into those recesses. To highlight them all up, I'm just adding some of that Screaming Skull into the Screamer Pink to get a much lighter pink colour and I'm using this to highlight. Once I'm happy with how that looks, I'm going to add more Screamer Skull into it and just mix it up to get an even lighter colour still and just gently apply this to the most raised areas of the candles, of the sword weapon grip and those wax seals. We'll do all the leather next and we'll base this with Doom Bull Brown. Take your time not to get it on bits we've already finished. We just want to make sure we get a nice even coverage. Once it's dry, take some Null Oil and shade it down. Once that's all dry, we want to highlight the leather with some scrag brown. Now, we're not going to do sharp line highlights. We're going to do a little bit of a stippling motion to give the impression of some worn leather around those edges. Take your time. Just make sure you've got a good point on your brush. We'll move on to painting the white parts next using Corax White. Now, in some areas, this is just going to be a case of repairing where you may have made a mistake over the primer. And in some areas, such as around the knee and around the lantern, it involves painting all of the Corax white in. Now this is a great paint, it covers well, but you still may need a couple of coats. We want to use a couple of contrast paints next, and firstly we're going to use a Yandan Yellow to shade the lantern. Now this is really effective because it gives a really nice warm glow effect. Once that dries, go back over with the silver colours just to paint over the outside of the mesh. We're also going to take some Apothecary White and we're going to paint this all over the white section, such as around the knee and also any other detail that you may have. To finish up the armour parts we're going to take some white scar and we're going to use this to highlight around all the white areas. So if you've got any white Templar crosses, the white shoulder pad, we're also going to take our time and design that white edge around the stencil with a really good sharp point on our brush and we're going to highlight that icon on the knee as well. Staying with white scar use this to highlight that Templar cross in the middle of the tabard. Now to do this take your time make sure you've got a good point on your brush and just do nice smooth thin lines. If you make any mistakes, you can just tidy it up with some red, nice and easy. The last thing we need to do is paint Hellbrack's head before we stick it all together on the base. And to do this, we're going to take some Kislev Flesh and base all around the face and the head, being careful around his white headband. I should say that I'm using the same techniques on Hellbrack on his attendants as well. To shade the Kislev Flesh, just take some Reitland Flesh Shade and paint this all around the recessed areas. Now you don't have to paint it all over the top of the head because it's going to be far too difficult to cover back up. So just paint it around where that headband meets the flesh. Highlighting the skin is really easy. Firstly take Kislev Flesh and basically paint over most of the area you've already painted. Just covering up some of that Reitland Flesh Shade and leaving it in the recesses. The next thing you want to do is take some Flayed One Flesh, which is much brighter, and use this to highlight the really raised area, such as the little bit of nose that's showing, the cheeks, the brow, and the top of the head. And there we have it, High Marshal Hellwreck is done. I really hope you liked the video. If you did, give it a like. Maybe check out some of my other Black Templar content that you can see here. A big thanks to my patrons. I'll see you next time.